Hey guys, this is the Super Review Show for this review of Avengers Age of Ultron. It came out on May 1st. I saw I had to see it firsthand. I had, I've been waiting three long years since the first Avengers to see it. And I'm going to highlight some of the key points in this in this, in this this review. Just saying, this is going to be full spoilers. There's going to be everything that happened in the movie. So if you don't want to watch spoilers, this is not the video for you. But if you if you don't really you don't really care about spoilers, watch ahead. You've been warned. Okay, first things first. <clears throat> Excuse me. It kept the spirit of the first Avengers. It kept the comedic elements. It kept the it kept the comedic elements. The action was incredible. It, it, if you just took the Avengers first end battle from the first movie and expanded upon it throughout the entire movie, that's what you get. You get all the Avengers just fighting a bunch of crazy homicidal robots led by Ultron, running around everywhere, doing their flipping crap around, okay? The entire movie was just action, just pure action. Another key point that they really, really, really did a great job of. Josh did an incredible work on this. He introduced the new characters very, very, very well. He, and they they had a great amount of screen time, too. It wasn't just all Iron Man or all Captain America or all Thor. You have... Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Vision. And actually, War Machine plays a big role in the film. He actually shows up for a lot of it. Falcon shows up for about two or three scenes. And another really cool thing about this is that the Quick... Like, obviously, this is going to be a spoiler review. Quicksilver is the one who bites the bullet. Literally, he doesn't really bite it, but he gets shot about 50 times by... Ultron takes a hold of the Avengers Quinjet, and Quicksilver actually sort of dies. So but it was it was the sacrifice play that that really brought them together more. Um also another thing that it set up civil war subtly, but it set it up. It set up civil war but yet it, at the same time it set the film uh, Captain America Civil War up perfectly. Uh, oh and, and for, just really quick, for those of you who don't know Scarlet which will be in Captain America Civil War. I don't know which on which side, but obviously we gotta find out. Um, what else? Oh yeah, Hawkeye. Josh Whedon said from the beginning, the moment they announced this film, Hawkeye is gonna play a much bigger role in this film. In this film, you see that he's got a family. He's got um, not just family. He also has he kid. He, he didn't have the kids. He, you know, in a relationship with someone who has kids. But he has kids that he's gotta deal with. He has a small town, a small farmhouse, and God knows where in America or whatever. Probably in like southern, somewhere in the like the Midwest, like eastern Midwest, stuff like that. Uh, and Shield knows about it, so they kept it off their radar. Um, the now this was hinted at in the trailer, but it's it's very legit. Bruce Banner and Black Widow are a couple now. They are now their ro their romance has formed, so to speak. That. It was teased in the trailers, but then you and then you watch the movie and say, "Oh my God!" So they they actually have an actual relationship now. So, um, I was, the, but the Hulk goes missing afterwards after he took down Ultron or whatever. No, actually, he crashed the Quinjet into something. Ultron got destroyed. But point being, um, she, the the two of them have an incredible relationship, like. That the the world's about to, I think it's like, but that the the whole thing. Ultron's big plan was, let's take part of a country, let's lift the propulsion systems up, lift up the giant rock, and smash like the like like, like what happened with the dinosaurs. Put it that way. That that was his plan. Um, overall, I thought Ultra Ultron was a great villain, incredible villain. Could not have picked a better choice. I mean, obviously the. After credit scene really showed a lot of um, Thanos getting the gauntlet. He actually got the gauntlet, but no stones, no Infinity Gems. Um, but yeah. Oh, another thing. At the end of the, at the very very the last shot of this movie is Captain America and Black Widow. They're training the new Avenger a new Avengers roster. That is Vision, War Machine, Falcon. And the Scarlet Witch. They all have their different costumes now. Except for Vision and 
uh, War Machine. Those two are the same outfits. But Scarlet Witch gets a new outfit. It's not, it's not the crown one or whatever from the comic books. It's not that really crazy, cheesy one. And uh, Falcon gets new wings and all that. So they all... That's the new roster for now. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. This is going to surprise all you sweaty nerds who haven't seen the movie yet. Vision picks up Thor's hammer. Like halfway through the film. No, no, actually, right right after the division is created, who pl- played by Paul Bettany. Paul Bettany did an incredible job as that character. He's voiced Jarvis over the over, over the whole, whole universe so far. What happens is is that the the Vision actually he says we have to go, and he hands Thor his hammer, and everyone's looking at it. And I, I, when I was sitting in the theater, and one, the only thing I heard was <gasps> so many people were gasping, just saying, "Oh my." God, this guy can pick up Thor's hammer because he can change his density. That's my only theory why he could do that. But otherwise, I don't know what else I could I could possibly think of. Oh yes, sorry about that. Hydra is gone. Shield is back. Fury showed up and halfway through. Um, Fury showed up halfway through. He's like, you know, Stark, why did you do this? But we got to fix the problem anyways. Also, another th- interesting thing about this movie is that. It gave oh another thing the Hulkbuster out the Hulkbuster the Hulkbuster scene with like Hulk versus Hulkbuster incredible no doubt in my mind it was just holy god that was incredible but one other thing that I was interested in to see was that a little while ago Tom Hiddleston who plays Loki was confirmed to play to re- reprise his role in Avengers: Age of Ultron. But apparently they cut that from the film. I'm surprised they actually, because he was, he was cast, he said, yeah, I'm going to be in one scene, blah, blah, and then they never showed it. I was a little surprised by that person. Because I, I was, I, I, obviously he's not to me the villain. Ultron is the villain. But it's just, it was one of those things where you just realize, hey, you know, you got to deal with it. But also, I can't, uh, uh, for me, probably my steel, my steel character, the character that took me away was probably the Vision. Vision was the Paul Bettany could not have played it better. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in my mind that he could have done that. But Vision, he was he in Joss Whedon's subtle moments with him. He was funny. He had the right type of costume. He had all of his powers emphasized everywhere. Um, the him and Scarlet Witch, you could, touches and hints of that were coming out. Crazy stuff like that. Another for all, but for all you Agents of Shield fans, I have not, I have stopped watching. I didn't watch season two yet, so don't comment below and say, "Oh, this happened in season two. Please don't. Shield is back, obviously. Hydra Strucker, Strucker, Strucker got taken down in the first scene or so. Um, oh, another big thing. Actually, two more things. Um, turns out Loki's staff is an in Infinity Stone. They show it in the movie that they break apart, and it's the Mind Stone. And the Mind Stone goes in Vision's head. Right there, just like in the comic books. It goes right in his forehead. And they do his they do his thing, and he, he's, he's, a, he's pretty much a badass. Um, another interesting thing was that Andy Serkis, the Andy Serkis character you saw in the movie, in the uh, trailers, is Ulysses Claw. And they had like five or six lines with Vibranium. You just, therefore, you have Black Panther's origin in Avengers Age of Ultron, setting up his 2018, I believe it's 2018 now, his 2018 film. Holy God, that's pretty awesome. That's, I find that to be awesome. Uh, Circus did an incredible job acting in that play, uh, part of, in that part of um, Ulysses, Claw, Ulysses Claw. Sorry about that, guys. But he also he he did a he, he's not claw yet he had a gun he didn't actually have the sonic gun he's probably alive he got his arm cut off by Ultron stuff like that but um also but here that's all the positives here are all the, here are some negatives that I had some very this is like some net some nitpicks some smaller stuff first things first I didn't feel. The fir- I didn't feel the same feeling I felt with the first Avengers. The first Avengers, which for, to me at least, was something very special. And it was very special because of 
it was it was it, it, because I got to see Iron Man. I got to see Iron Man. I got to see Captain America. I got to see all these guys and the Incredible Hulk as well. I got to see all of them together. And then this film comes along, and I know Joss worked his ass off doing this, but he he was the right fit. Obviously, he he told the story incredibly well. But and that, one of the smaller things I had was the story for me at least was a little weak. Only only a little. Only a little weak. Uh, it, it wasn't as... Like, here's how I put Avengers. Ult- Ultron's like right underneath it. The, it. Directly, it's touching underneath it. I didn't... Look, uh, I love this movie. But one of the thing, One of the problems I had with it was... To me at least, I didn't feel the same pull as a character. I didn't follow... Ultron, to me at least, wasn't as strong of a villain as I thought he would be. Obviously, he's he's Ultron, but there were some, how to put it, he was very, he was an incredible villain, but I didn't feel the same gravitas that I felt with Loki in the first one. Like, oh my god, this guy could kill. Obviously, he killed, but I didn't have that same feeling, that feeling of fear for this guy That's in a combo movie. I didn't have that fear. <coughs> Excuse me. Other things that I noticed... Um, they could have developed a few more things better, <coughs> such as, uh, maybe not a few things, maybe, maybe one or two things. Like, Fury showed up slightly randomly, halfway through the film in the barn, um, stuff like that. Oh, well, one of the things I really liked about this film, though, was that Joss Whedon really did keep the, um, it was dark, obviously, but he kept the... He kept the he brought the spirit of the lightheartedness of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the darkness of it together in one film. That was very very clever of him. He worked he really did really work really hard. But um, I can't think of anything else to say. But if you know of something that I forgot to say, please comment below and let me know what I forgot to say in this review of Avengers: Age of Ultron. What key points did I miss? Did I miss any negatives? Did oh one last thing. My final score of Avengers Age of Ultron is a 9 out of 10. There you go. It's a 9 out of 10. It's not a 10 out of 10. I gave the first one a 10. This one's a 9. It was still incredible, but I gave it a 9. Take that as you will. So, please, let me know. Is there? Let me know. Is there anything in the comments? Let me know in the comments section. Is there anything that you, that that you, as, as my viewers, have, have noticed that I don't have yet? Such as, like, like, maybe I missed, maybe I missed a few things. Maybe I missed... Um, something that was very vital for the whole movie. Maybe I missed, I don't know, but you comment below and you let me know what did I, what did I miss? What did I miss as far as this review? Um, also, sound off your thoughts in the comment section. I would love to see your thoughts about this review. Um, so for this review of Avengers, Age of Ultron, in theaters now as far as May 3rd, 2015 goes, for the Super Review Show, I'll see you later.